big blessing now if we if we read this uh that opens a window to a new world we never saw before and uh by their mercy we can use our mind properly to go in in this world take part of it and get a new identification new identification means if uh, maybe some of of you in this life changed also their identification their names <laughs> no no the identification for example if you become mother or father after that you change your identification before you was not father or mother you was the child of of someone but then you change your identification you become father or mother and then you feel like father and mother or mother. Mm. and the same same thing happen if if we accept ourselves as a manjari then also like in this life in the material world we create feelings like motherly or fatherly feelings we can create uh, by the identification of this rule we can create also as a manjari the feelings of a manjari and all this happened by relationship by loving relationship if you see your baby first time then uh, automatically the relationship is there and your na by natural feeling the love is there there is no meaning of to learn something the love is there in the first moment you you see your baby and touch your baby then full love is there so, see confirmed yeah <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> so and that we can learn so much uh, on this natural path to create this kind of feelings as a manjari by meditating on these verses from the from our senior manjaris i would say not much much older but little and they give us so such a nice view in this eternal world that by meditating concentrating meditating on this we can create a relationship it depends of our eagerness and i think last time we, we wrote about this eagerness that is natural in the spiritual world in the sita deya because they are live in this they are a uh, part of it but we have to try to come closer so by eagerness we have to create some eagerness in ourselves to come close and uh to come in a relationship and accept ourselves as the manjari this is the teaching of our gurudev and that moment 
we come, we make a big step in that moment we accept ourselves as a manjari. This is the biggest step I think we can do. So, but now I read. Sorry. This was only introduction. Introduction. <laughs> oh, Swamini, mistress, while you are on your way to the abode of the king of Raja, Andishwara, to cook for Madhava, every pore of hair on your body stands erect of joy and your gait falters. So, you was not so, your walking was not so stable because you was in ecstasy. Will my eyes ever attain this vision? The more the devotee experiences, the more the devotee's devotional hope increases. So, and there is this word hope, what Gurudev so many times used, no? That it starts with the hope. When devotion appears in the heart, the devotee feels himself unqualified. But he is also bound by strong hopes, again hope, for attaining the beloved. So we need this hope. And hope comes from faith. No? Right? So that means here in the explanation we can understand the importance of the meaning of hope and before is the faith. Um, where I, am I? A very weak soul and where, where is this love that is rarely attained? even by great devotees. Where am I? A very weak soul. Wicked. Wicked, wicked soul. That and means a uh, bad soul. Yeah, Fallen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and where is this love that is rarely attained even by great devotees? Still, I'm agitated by strong hope for attaining this. Again, hope. Now, so many times he speak about this hope. And then we can understand how important this hope is. And this we have to save in our hearts, this hope. And it is... Uh, given by all our acharyas they attain the topmost bliss because they was always full of hope this hope is nectar you see and this the support of life so you see if you if you see a person who is full of hope and one person is hopeless. If you feel this energy in both, there is a big difference. So, and we can be so thankful to get this hope from the Acharyas, from Gurudev, that we are hopeful. We can stay in this energy of hope and for sure we will reach all what is described in this book this hope will be very strong in Svarupavesh 
You see, even here. This is a very beautiful thing. Wow, Ananda Das Babaji, huh? Much mischief will go by thinking, I am Radha's maidservant. Wow. Much mischief will go by thinking, I am Radha's maidservant. Svarupavesh will set fire to the mischief of lust and anger in the heart. Wow, Suniti, Svarupavesh, what is the meaning? Svarup is our original position as a Dasi, as a servant. And if I have gotten this from my Gurudev, then I know my name, I know my dress color, I know my feeling, my nature. And I uh, practice to live in this. I practice to absorb in this. This is called Svarup Avesh. Avesh means absorption or also identity. Wow. <clears throat> so that means just what he explained before. No? I am Radha's maidservant. That means Svarup Avesh. Yeah. Right? And if I think that and live in this, I will set fire. <laughs> it's a heavy. I will set fire to the mischief of lust and anger in the heart. Beautiful. It will be burnt away by this. From Sanatana Goswami's Brihat Bhagavatamrita, it is known that. I don't have the power to experience the bliss of meeting the Lord. Separation is my practice. 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 Wow. There is also a big meaning inside this. I don't have the power to experience the bliss of meeting the Lord. Separation is my practice. Wow. It's uh, similar to us. No? We are, at the moment, we have not the power to meet Swamini or even Krishna. So we, we have some eagerness and we, our practice is in separation. This eagerness comes in this mood of the separation. Creates meditation on I am Radha's maidservant. A person who has not experienced separation first cannot desire meeting. Wow. Jainanda, huh? Yes. Is it Unbelievable, huh? This description and very beautiful. A person who has not experienced separation first cannot desire meeting. Wow. Wow. Very deep. What is Sehnsucht? Yearning. Yes, yearning. This has to grow up in our hearts. In Svarupavesh, separation will be experienced, not in bodily consciousness. So in that moment we accept ourselves as Rata's maidservants, we feel separation, because we are not there in that moment. But we feel that we like to be there. <coughs> we like to live in Raj. Like our sisters, they are sitting in the basement. In Svarupavesh, the aspirant will constantly think, when will I get it? And that means greed, heavy greed. When will I get it? I also... Maybe today? Today, yes, why not? 
Maybe, maybe just just about. now, just now. Time is limited. We have not so much time, so we have to be very greedy and stay in charge. Like our Radha Charandas and our Jayananda Maharaj. They are very greedy, more than we. And also Vandana is there now and wow. Ashwavi. Yes, yes. We have yes. many greedy, greedy souls who go to Vrindavan. Why I don't see them there? Rajeshwari is sitting now. Rajeshwari, you are there? Vandana also? <laughs> hey, Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> so nice. When will I get it? I feel so miserable. I could die like a fish out of water. That is the meaning. I'm not in my uh, natural uh, element. This feeling when I'm not in in Braj, in Braja, that has to come because I'm a maid servant, and what I'm doing here, my God. <laughs> I'm somewhere, but not in Vrindavan. That means like a fish out of water. The devotee sits down in the marketplace of mercy and gets what he desires by paying the price of having a feeling of, what is that? Dirth. Darth, Darth. Yeah. so verdursten, um, ah. dying out of thirst. Wow. The devotee sits down in the marketplace of mercy. So Niti likes to listen something about this marketplace of mercy. Yes. Who has an idea? Wants to share. <laughs> Goravani is smiling so brightly. Yeah. Uh, I, I can guess so well just now. <laughs> it's like Namahata, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Who knows something about the marketplace of mercy? So, that that you want to share? I, I couldn't guess, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's better if someone who knows look help. So actually, I want to hear this one, you know. And uh, if maybe Gorabaniji, maybe you know something, or Goranga Sundaraji. <coughs> if no one likes to say no, something, I will read. <laughs> okay, okay, I want to share one thing. Okay, <laughs> last chance. <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know, correct or not. <laughs> so, so we are reading, we are reading uh, a couple of days ago, and one by Siddha Mahatma, some devotees asking Siddha Mahatma, how can I get Prema? Then Siddha Mahatma told, told the devotee, if we are, we have mood, to another piece Nietzsche's birth's mood, they, they, he can get prema, or he, he's going to get prema. So, I want to share, so, yesterday we, I was reading with a few devotees about, uh, uh Shikshashtakan by Anandas Bauji Maharaj. And just we are reading to another P bus. Mm -hmm. So Fat Baba explained this to another P bus. So then we found out very interesting bus. Actually devotion and humbleness is nearly equal. So means uh, devotion Devotion and humbleness is nearly equal, almost same. 
That means someone who has bhakti or prema, that person should be very humble. Or someone who is very humble, that's, that person may have bhakti or prema. Then Baba explained, how can we, how can we get prema? Or how can we get humbleness? This is very interesting you know, subject. The Baba mentioned clearly, devotion come from the mercy of great Vaishnava, great devotee. So I would say, for us, Rashka Vaishnava. And also Baba say, this humbleness also come from the mercy of great devotees. So, then, the devotee sits down in the marketplace of the mercy. So what is the marketplace of mercy? This is, I, really, I don't know, but I guess. This is, I think, Sadhu Sangha, especially Sajati Sangha, someone who has same feeling, same goal. That devotee, if possible, more advanced devotee than I, than we. And, so where we could find out this Rashka Vajnava? So, in Buraja, in Brindavan, so it's more easy to find out Rashka Vajnava. Because Gurudev was there. Gurudev was mm. is there. Mm. Or other Rashka Vajnava also there. So, eh, Radha Charampab mentioned, Nitai opened marketplace, Namahata. Wow. So, means someone who chant holy name. Because from holy name, everything come actually. If we continuously chanting, then automatically humbleness also coming. Also, prema is coming. If we chant offenselessly or continuously. So this very interesting, this marketplace of, the, the mercy of marketplace. So I would say this international sadhu sangha may also consider the mercy of marketplace. Hundred percent, Jai I, Yeah, I would say because Rashka Vaishnava try to share their feeling. So whoever give to us, so I want to, I also personally, I'm nothing, but uh, something I hear from Gurudev. So this Gurudev's word is, say, like uh, uh, the word of great devotees. Uh, Mahabani. Mahabani bring us to the perfection. <clears throat> so, uh, our position, we want to repeat this Anandas Baj Maharaj's words, or Gurudev's word, or Raghunadas Goswami, or other Rashka Vaishnava's words, and sharing them, that also we may consider the mercy of marketplace. This book also, Mm -hmm. I may say this, this book, Birapak Sumanja, also we may consider the mercy of market, book, <laughs> marketplace, and also mercy of book. Rade, rade. Very, very nice. Tanana, thank you. I also found something about the marketplace of mercy. You see? Here in my wow. songbook. There's this beautiful song that came immediately in my mind. Bodo Sukher Kabogai. 
Uh-huh. It's a song uh, from Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur about Nityananda's marketplace of mercy. And it says that Nityananda is selling the holy name on sale. You know, something is on sale. I always like the shopping. I'm a shopping queen, I must admit. <laughs> but I only like to buy the best things in sale. <laughs> Now we got your topic. <laughs> <laughs> so when Nityananda is selling the holy name, then it's on sale, means it's something very valuable, something high class, something the best quality you get for a good price. <laughs> And that is so such a miracle. And the price, what is the price? You know the song Nagoravani, that's why you smile so nicely. The code on your tie. So the price for the holy name, which is on sale by Nityananda, is only faith. Only for the price of faith he's selling. So that is a very cheap price, but also we can say a very high price because, wow, I have to stabilize, I have to always increase, I have to, when I lose it, I have to. You know, to try to increase it again because the faith on my level is sometimes there and sometimes is also out. But Nityananda is looking on the devotees who are, who are really eagerly standing in line. And he is testing the devotees and is, is also making bargaining. You know, bargaining. His nita is bargaining. So, oh, really, you want it? Mm-hmm. How much faith are you, uh, you know, putting on the scale? <laughs> mm. Like this. So that is very, uh, very uh, funny and also inspiring uh, song. I can, uh, uh, maybe one of these uh, Zooms, we sing it. It's called Koda Nitai or Bodo Suker Kabugai. And that was the first thing that came into my consciousness when I think about the marketplace of mercy. Radhe. <laughs> <laughs> Sudevi also knows the song. <laughs> Jai Ho. Beautiful, beautiful. Anybody else? <laughs> The devotee, yes? Yes. I, I just uh, thought about his marketplace when so many beautiful things is possible to get, but if someone poor came and just sitting and eagerly looking at all this stuff, maybe some rich person lo- will see this, <laughs> his situation, how he eagerly looking at this, and just from magnanimously, he will give some. Yes, Let's, yes. When devotees assemble together and sharing Harikatha, sharing feelings, and someone will get natural things of, how to say, love to someone. See how he, someone wants so much, and he come and tell, oh, it's like this. <laughs> this, this, this. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. Now one, one picture came in my mind that is... Uh, We are now in Christmas time in Germany, you know, Christmas time. And um, everybody is baking beautiful sweets. You can find it in, in uh, uh, every household. They will make some sweets. Cookies. Cookies like this. And if, if a child ca- comes and look in the window, And is very greedy. And the mother who is baking see this, what she will do? She will open the window and offer some cookies, right? But only when the child is very greedy. I think when there is a child only watching his smartphone <laughs> and Looking okay. Oh, they are baking. They will not get the cookies, right? 
So the mother is not so interested. But if there is the, the child has big eyes <clears throat> and looks a little hungry, and then she will immediately give the cookies. This is also what I feel. Can I ask you something? Yes, please. Yes. I'm, I'm so inspired to listen to you. I'm so happy and it's so nice to imagine this marketplace. <laughs> and so Devi, who does the translation, she says, oh, Garavani can sing the song and we love this song and we love to hear Garavani. Maybe it's possible that he, that he can sing the song for us? Yes. <laughs> Garavani. <laughs> oh, for this you have to come to our place for the party we are planning the next party so only the eager ones can come and will listen that song right Goravani? yes <laughs> only the most eager persons actually <laughs> my sister is so eager yes i'm eager and all the other devotees now today in the zoom i know so, they are all so, so eager, so eager. <laughs> they, of course it's up to Goravani. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just thinking that actually, if you see Panchatattva, this is the living marketplace of Brahma. Wow. Mm. Because we have all aspects of love of Brahma inside. Oh. And they are freely giving it to everyone. Mm. So you can sit in lines with no money to pay. <laughs> no, actually not even the slightest wish to have it but you are by chance sitting in the line you will get it mm -hmm. because nita is so eager to put the love of radharani in our heart again fire it up again it's there in everyone's heart it has to be fired up again so mm -hmm. Nitai wants to set fire in everyone's heart to this mm. Brahma again. But not only he. The whole Panchatattva, so many aspects. And if we think about these aspects or meditate better on these aspects, we will see that actually Panchatattva is the living marketplace mm. of Brahma. Wow. Wow. Very beautiful. And I, I, I think all this, this image of a marketplace, it's, it's so beautiful, no? So that we can meditate on this as the place we like to be to get the mercy. Yes. And we know that a lot of fellows who don't have money to buy something are anyway there always hope to get something for free and there is standing Nitai and selling the holy name and giving Brema in the heart of everyone for free that's such a wonderful picture in the mind so actually I, I cannot sing it now because I need the text I need to to remember the the tune actually it's but it's a, it's a I good don't sing uh, it every day. sure we can uh, we not forget this <laughs> so you can <laughs> next time you can prepare a little bit and then we will remember you okay I will no, if everyone is so <laughs> eager to have the good marketplace of good association they can come here yes to Bickenfeld wow yeah, I'm uh, speaking in an uh, invitation right now for the eager devotees. And then we will sing the holy names with a lot of eagerness and happiness. And all are invited. Now, Goravani, you are coming. Well, now, now <laughs> I know that I have to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. And you have a date? Ah, I think uh, uh, around the 29th and 30th until the New Year's, we have a party. We open a marketplace at the end of the year. Wow. Finish the year. Excuse me. 
El español no se escucha, de Spanish no se escucha. Oh. What escucha? Español no se escucha. They don't hear? Kann Übersetzung wahrscheinlich. Ja, translation missing in Spain. Whom, whom to set for Spanish? What devotee will translate in Spanish? Ah. Oh. Who will do this? I don't know. Now it's set uh, Prema Bhakti Lati Kadasi. It's a set uh -huh. for Spanish. Okay. Maybe if some if it's someone else, I can set someone else for Spanish. So is there someone who can translate in Spanish? Priya, maybe Priya, but I think maybe she's not here. Von Abuela Brema Bhakti Lalita Dasi Anale. Es que no. Tadukta, ah, ja. Yeah, this is a very Spanish message. <laughs> this, this is true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we, we should continue. Huh? The, the devotee sits down in the marketplace of mercy and gets what he desires by paying the price of having a feeling of Darth. Darth. Thirst. Trinus, thirst. Yeah, the main point is that he get, come in the feelings. Feeling. This is the, the point. And um, he will get what is his desire by coming in the feelings, growing the feelings. And then this this means also eagerness, no? That he feels like the fish out of the water, out of his element. Then uh, this this heavy greed is there, and then he will get the the mercy. The suitable place for having this feeling of thus das. Das. das is Raja Dharma. Yeah, that is the best place to have feelings no? of separation. Because Raja Dharma is the place of feelings. Because it is the residence of Mahabhav. So in this natural way braja is the, pla the the place we have to be even if we're not bodily there we will live in our minds as maid servants in braja dharma with our friends with our swamini here in Braj, the separated devotee wanders around looking for his desired deity, weeping and lamenting like our Raghunath does. When Gop Kumar came to the terrestrial Raj, his condition was thus. I spent all days and nights there weeping in great distress with a pitiful voice. In the material world, a person is so distressed when he loses a child or so that he sits down in a lonely place without speaking to anyone simply crying. People of the world become mad when they are out of money. 
Oh, Radhe, when will I feel like this about you? That's such oh, a wonderful Does Babaji yeah. give nice example? Hmm? Yes, go That's on. such a wonderful point. No? <laughs> this is describing how greedy we should be, actually. No? And Ananda Das Babaji is always giving such practical, mm. experienced examples, actually. It's so wonderful because usually people are so mad after money, mm. after some partner or something like this. They are so mad. They are meditating the whole day on this, right? Sure. This is very easy for us huh? to understand. <laughs> But how to understand, to get this greediness yeah. for the association of Radharani? Gauravani, we only have to change this image of a dollar to the face of Swamini. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to do. <laughs> and our mind is, will be fixed. That's right? a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Then it becomes uh, intense. What I felt for me, what, what was very helpful, that I understood by the mercy of Jesus, he was actually telling us, your father, your mother of you as soul. Mm. So, if we first of all get this picture in the heart that we are so loved by our parents and just if somebody asks you, who's your mother? How would you meditate now on your real mother, Radharani? What you can answer? Oh my God, she is uh, cool. She is such a wonderful mother, you cannot imagine. The love she has. Just meditate on this was helping me so much. What would I say if someone asks me now, who's your mother? And who is your father? If I put Radharani and Krishna on these places, I could give so wonderful answers. Mm. So if this is installed in the heart, Actually, this was also one of the points Jesus wanted to make. If this is installed in our heart, that our mother and our father, Radharani and Krishna, then, then we can start to go in Lila. If this is not basically there as our deep feeling, then we will not have this feeling of Rati, we want to go back, we want to be there, we want to be in the game, we want to be there, part of it, because we are. Mm. And in this way, we can feel that it's natural. I just wanted to share this because I feel that helped me a lot, actually. Very nice, Gorvani, thank you. Very nice. People of the world become mad when they are out of money. Oh, Rade, when will I feel like this about you? When a devotee reaches that condition, Swamini cannot stay far away anymore. She cannot stay. If we are greedy like this and become mad for her dasha, she cannot stay far. Not possible because she is the source of love. How can she stay far if we try to come close? Did you know a mother who sent the, the 
child away when the child comes in love, running to her. No mother, no mother will do this with open arms, huh? Mama crying. Every mother comes running to her child. And so we can see Swamini cannot stay far away anymore. The question may now arise, money and children are very tangible things, aren't they? What means tangible things? You can touch, you can imagine, uh -huh. you can, you know, Reach you easy. have experience of them. Uh -huh. <coughs> Radharani is not such a tangible thing. How can we experience her? Wow, a very nice question, huh? How can we experience her money? We can, we open our pocket, we have money. When we like to see our children, we can call her, come here. <laughs> but Radharani, how can we experience her? How can we think of her? Well, we have never experienced her. That's a very deep point. I like very much. The answer is, you can't experience her because you don't think of yourself as her maidservant. Wow. Huh? Now we got it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's it. Because we don't have the relation yet. That's it. We not accept ourselves as a maidservant. But... And that moment we accept her, uh, no, we accept us as maidservants, we can experience her. Boah. Ananda Das Babaji Ki Jai. Jai Ho. Jai. This awareness will awaken when you experience your relationship with her. So that fits together. I allow myself to be a maidservant and then I can experience my Swamini. I'm fixed. Uh, then what Gurudev said, I'm in the sty bath and this gives so much power that I can experience my Swamini. This is the way. Bhajan will swiftly be accomplished in this way, in the Prima Bhakti Chandika is described, my heart will be filled with joy when I defeat my enemies, like lust, anger, greed, etc. And I will easily worship Govinda. That is described before. And that moment we accept ourselves as a manjari, our enemies will finish. Because then our mind is fixed on our swarup. And there is no anger. There is no lust. But this energy of the anger and lust is used for the service. So they are finished. No more disturbance in this. A person in Swarupa Vesh may be engaged in worldly duties, but his mind is always fixed on the lotus feet of his beloved deity. You see? That's the point, no? He is, he is in this world, but not from this world. For example, he is do his duties, but in the mind connected, connected to his uh, to the service of uh, of a manjari. Sriman Mahaprabhu compared these devotees with wives that have a paramour. Now those who are 
engaged in some activities, but in the mind they are fixed in the service. The wife may be engaged in her household wife work. The wife may be engaged in her household work, but her mind is always fixed on her paramour. So, Nidhi, you can describe what is paramour? A paramour is a secret beloved person. So, like uh, the devotees here in this world doing uh, duties, they are cleaning the house, they are going shopping, and they are working in different, different companies, they are selling stuff. Uh, I was just now on the marketplace with the shawls. But in the mind and in the heart, there's always these feelings for our sacred beloved Swamini. That's a paramour relationship. <laughs> When her household work is somehow accomplished, she will run off to her lover. In the same way, the devotee is also taking the lotus feet of Sri Rata in his heart in a lonely place whenever he can get out of his material entanglement. <laughs> At the moment, it is just opposite to us. No? We use every moment to be in the material, <laughs> watching some TV or like this and that. And smartphone is always with us. <laughs> and uh, But then we change it. We, we, we use this only for, for, uh, for the, um, what is absolutely needed. And in every free moment, we do seva. For example, we do some bhajan or chanting or uh, doing something in the temple. And manasi seva. And our mind is, is fixed in our service as manjari. Everyone in this world calls me mine, mine, but I don't lend an ear to this. I will meditate on Swamini's lotus feet, her form, her attributes and her pastimes. I will see to it that she will be satisfied with my devotional service. That means Every step I do in this world should be to make her happy, like she do to Krishna. Srila Rupa Goswami has written the essential instructions down in his Upadesha Amrita. Gradually, the devotee must become more and more absorbed in engaging the tongue and the mind in chanting and remembering the glories of Radha and Krishna's names, forms and pastimes, spending all his time living in Braja, in allegiance to the Raga Nuga Bhaktas. This is the quintessence of all instructions. Wow. Then we have to read again, right? Padeshamrita from Rupa Goswami, verse number eight. Gradually, the devotee must become more and more absorbed in engaging the tongue and the mind in change, in chanting and remembering the glories of Radha and Krishna's names, forms and pastimes. Spending all his time living in Vraj, in allegiance to the Raganuga Bhaktas, 
This is the quintessence of all instruction. So now we can say, okay, but what about all these people who are not in, in, in Raja, maybe in Russia, like Govinda Mohini and many others, <laughs> or even Japan, uh, or in uh, what is Croatia, Goranga Sundar? No? You now come to Schengen, I heard. <laughs> Croatia is open, wow. <laughs> open border to Europe. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so that uh, we are coming from so many different countries, South America, Hong Kong. I heard also now, no? There are yes, today, today, from... ten devotee with Jagadev, uh, uh, Jadeva Maharaj. Oh, Just really? Okay. Yes. Now, maybe they are, I don't know, taking less because... Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, but... Uh, so, we are suggesting come here also, to, to hear and share also. So nice, so nice. But if we are not in Vrindavan, so what is the meaning then? To live in Vraj. So then... I think. Yes. Go on, Asuna. Please. Yes, I just want to say something about this, what you are talking now, that we should very clearly understand and accept in our heart that Raja is not geographical location. Mm. Give me five. This is give me five. <laughs> give me five, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is not geographical town, place, location. And uh, this is a transcendental place. So, of course, it's very beneficial and it's very important to come in Vraja because in that way we will come into contact with different direct mm. Kripa from the Vraja's dust, from the Vraja's, Vraja's air, Vraja's sadhus. Mm especially those sadhus who are according to our mood. Mm. So this is very important. But uh, as we can see from our practical lives, and also our acharyas were talking about that, if someone cannot live in Vraja, he can live in mm. the heart and the mind. So there is a difference. And if we are coming in Germany, if we come in Croatia, and uh, if we are forced to live in our countries, which are geographically far mm. away from Vrindavan, it doesn't mean that we are not able to live and die in Vrindavan in our countries, our homes. Mm. Because if we are dying Vrindavan, then we were crying for Vrindavan. Mm. And this kind of crying will build our consciousness that we are constantly in Vrindavan. Mm. And I think that one of the reasons why Rupa, Nug uh, Rupa Goswami is writing these words, he said, gradually, devotee must become more and more absorbed in engaging tongue and mind in the chanting and remembering Radha Krishna's names, forms, and so on. And all his time living in Vraja. Mm -hmm. So gradually we have to come to this consciousness that Vraja is a transcendental place and we are bringing Vraja and nourishing Vraja mood in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And if Radhika wants to make us more eager, and if we, are, we have enough Sukritis to live in Vraja mm -hmm. or whatever, it will happen. But maybe mm -hmm. she has another plan. We don't know. <laughs> Because sometimes we can live in Raja, we can spend some 
time in Vraja, mm -hmm. but not to be in Vraja. Mm -hmm. Because we are not following the mood of Rajavasis, allegiance to Raganuga devotees. So mm. the, when we are talking about Vrindavan, living in Vrindavan, the main point is not physical living in Vrindavan, mm. although it is very <laughs> appreciable and mm. <clears throat> beneficial, but we have to gradually establish consciousness through our spiritual identity by chanting and remembering mm. that we are Vrajavasis. Very and nice. in that moment, we will receive all help from Vraja Sadhus, living or unliving. And in that way, we will be exposed to be on a marketplace, even in Croatia, in Japan, South America, Italy, or whatever. Because Germany. This is Germany. Okay. I'm sorry. I forgot it. Okay. Because this is transcendental marketplace. It's always and everywhere present. Mm. Not before, not in the future, now. Uh, so gradually, we have to develop this kind of awareness and to pay the price mm -hmm. that we don't want to live anywhere else. That means dying. <laughs> I want only you, so it means that I want to be dead for everyone else. I want only your name, so it means that I don't want, I want to be dead for all other things. I want to be situated in Vraja, close to you, nearby mm. you, my Rade. It means that I'm ready to die for all other desires. Mm -hmm. So this is mean this means death. And Baba is saying the price is death. So it means who is ready to die? <laughs> Who is ready to die? Only someone who can accept his spiritual, another spiritual identity. Otherwise, no one is ready to die. Mm. No one ready to die. Even if he said, I want to die, it means I want to be born again. That's the reason why I want to die. But only someone who accepted the Swarup. Yeah, he is ready to die, he is ready to cry from the soul, and he has genuine hope mm. because Baba is saying this hope, Swarur Vesh, is giving this hope, otherwise, without Swarup Vesh, without Ishtadev, hope can exist. But on the religious platform, yes, not on right. the spiritual platform. Yes, yes, hope, yes, yes. religious hope, and spiritual hope is the two different kinds of hopes. Because yeah. spiritual hope is coming from the soul and from Swarupave. And it brings to devotee and to his heart, on one sense, great feelings of separation. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean, feelings of separation? I'm dying without you. So Radhika is saying, first become mine. First become mine. Like you, Gorasundar, you already so many times said, Swarupvesh, Swarupvesh. That means I am yours. Tavai Vasmi. Tavai Vasmi. And I don't have anyone who can say this. Mm -hmm. Only person who already died mm -hmm. for everything else. 
So this is my understanding, and this is why we are talking about this, because in that way we want to worship this Mahavani, like you said, Gorasundar. How we can worship the Mahavanis? With our ears, tongues, minds, hearts. And in no. that way, by worshiping of this Mahavanis, we are living eternally in Vraja, if we have established our relationship. Yeah. If we didn't establish a relationship, we can live in Raja who knows how many lifetimes. For me, that's true. Clear. For that's me, true. We clear. can and I don't want to, to go all around, you know, we can transform it and this and that. No. Just this is not the teaching of our Gurudev. Yes. So thank nice. You. Yes, thank you, Guru. So this is the teaching of our Guru there. No. And then we can live in Raja for in allegiance hmm. to our Guru Dev, who is Manjari, who is Rupa Nuga, or generally speaking, Raga Nuga. Hmm. Otherwise, then we are living in the mood of Raja Loka Anusarata. Hmm. So this is what we should hanker for that. Mm. And then separation will be our sadhana. Because the sadhana, real sadhana is feeling of separation, not mechanical performance. Real sadhana means separation in the heart. From what? From transcendental Raj. Not yes. geographical Raj. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although I am very suffering because I cannot go now directly in Raj, but I, I am trying to develop my feelings that this suffering is helping me to practice sadhana. I'm useless for other sadhanas. One day this, one day that, one third day this, no. But feelings of separation from Raja are always present in the shop, in the working place, in the factory, in the taxi, in the bus. Feelings of my beloved is always present. And this is the mm. Raja, not yeah. geographical. Radi, Radi. Thank you. Thank you, Goranga Sundar. So beautiful. Goranga Sundar, can I add? Yes, please, please. Um, the name of this place, Raj, means that it, which is moving. It's not staying in the place. Mm -hmm. And Raj means, um, Raj is expansion or extension of Srimati Radhika. This is mean Raj can fulfill the desires of that Vaishnava, that's the devotee who is crying, I want Raj. In that place, Raj is moving. And today we heard in morning reading one nice story about one poor devotee from Europe. He, he was so poor who, what he could not go to uh, Vrindavan. He could not purchase ticket, air ticket. But he has a case. In this case, he has Radha, Krishna, Brajabasi, cows. And he everywhere <laughs> go with this case and worship with Raja. And one day, by the mercy of Srimati Radhika, he got ticket to Vrindavan. <laughs> and he came to Vrindavan came to uh, no, uh, Radakund, and ultimately he left his word at Radakund and the band wow. of Radakund. Wow. Rade. Very nice, so nice. What? Kovani? Yes. I was just thinking when I heard your wonderful words of Goranga Sundara and you all and Brother Charan, I, I was so inspired. I had some picture of practical um, um, put it to the earth like this. When we go in our kitchen, <laughs> we may see our kitchen. But a child who is missing the mama and is going somewhere, only sees the place where mama is always. The child doesn't think it's a kitchen. Mm -hmm. The child thinks, oh, it's mama's kitchen. 
Mm-hmm. And mama is there. And I will cook now with mama. <laughs> and in this meditation, just like a child, completely helpless and with no motive, the child is just playing now. Mama is there. <laughs> I'm with her. And we cook together. Mm. So when we try just to do that the whole day, wherever we are, this is the place of Mama, and there is Mama, mm. then we are in Brindavan, and Brindavan is more merciful than Ratha, it is said. Why? The expansions of Radharani are always more merciful. Why? We can think it's not possible to be more merciful, right? Because they are coming mm. more near, actually. That's the point. They are coming more near to us, the expansions. Like Radhacharan does wonderfully said, Braj means moving place. Braj is coming to us. <laughs> we don't need to go to Braj. Braj will come to us. We don't need to go to Ganga Jal, Yamuna Jal. They will come to us. We know that. We learned that actually. So they, Brindavan can come to us, but it's like Goranga Sundra said nicely it's a state of the mind. I have to want it, to call it, because how I can be in the game of Manjari. If there is no branch, it's not possible. It's the home of Radharani. How I can think about Radha without branch? It's not possible. So we start with branch, and we hear so often that Raghunadas is falling down and praying to branch. You are so merciful, branch. Please give me it's praying to branch. Please. Help me to have the direct service to my Swamini. Thank you very much. Yes. Giovanni, so nice. This is a, this is really deep meaning when we discuss about Braja and the meaning of Braj. And I, I remember that also Rupa Goswami was praying to, to Vrinda Devi. Vrinda Devi. Vrinda Devi. When he was missing this view that she will give this. There are many help is there. All the Sakis are there. Mother, father of Krishna is there. Krishna himself is there. Our Swamini is there. They are all ready to help if we call properly. This eagerness we can uh, create in our Sadak Deya. It's only eagerness, greed. That we have to do. This is our job. If we really like to be there. But many are there who likes to help to come there. And I will say one thing to our explanation also that if we see the example of our gurus, our Gurudev, Sadhu Maharaj, or even when we see the, the example of uh, uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami, Prabhupada. Before he he started his journey to uh, America and the whole world, he was in in Vrindavan, right? He sit there in uh, Radha Damodar Temple in a very small cave, sit close to Rupa Goswami. And there he got so much um, how to say inspiration of the 
holy dharm of Vrindavan, that he could store it in his heart. And after that, wherever he was going or traveling, he created a, a part of Vrindavan there. So this was his, his inner power, right? And uh, the same is with our Gurudev. Or even if you see other uh, uh, gurus who are very deep in the bhajan, realized souls, wherever they go, there is only one topic. And this topic is Vrindavan. They make no other, they don't speak about <laughs> other things. <laughs> If we sit there, automatically we are, they bring us to Vrindavan. And so in this point, we can understand, um, we can be here and creating Vrindavan, but first we have to be fixed in our Svaru. We have to become an inhabitant of this Vrindavan. And if we accept this and we are accepted as this inhabitant, we can go wherever we like to go. There will be Vrindavan. Right, Guranga Sunna, is it true? First, <laughs> but this we have to fix. Oh, we have to pray for and my My own experience is really that uh, it is, uh, this year I was four times in Vrindavan and I can say, okay, many things happen much, in, much more intense and more openly in Vrindavan when I'm even in the Sadak Deya there. It's a different to Germany. Uh, this is only my experience. Because I'm not this kind of fixed like Prabhupada or Guru did. But I can feel when I'm in, in, the, in this worldly Vrindavan, there is uh, till now in these days a very intense energy to come close to the bridge passes and to the Holy Dharma. It's really, it's a, a big difference to be there and here. But it's only because I'm not this ripe person like uh, uh, our Acharyas, right? Suniti? So, I want to read a little bit more this paragraph. In this verse, Sri Raghunath Das perceives Sri Radha's pastime of going to Nandishvara for Krishna in the early morning. So this is also a nice meditation to know that every morning around 7 o'clock, Shimati Radhika goes to cook for Krishna, to Nandishwara. And Raghunath Das is not the controller of these visions. They come to him spontaneously. So this is mercy. Yes, I have to say that, you know, this is a relief for me because I cannot press any visions. I cannot press anything. I cannot even press my tears if they are not coming. But I can pray and I can feel that I'm very small and, you know, I need mercy. I, I... I, I need mercy, I need blessings. And then actually I feel that when the right combination of all these feelings is, is there in my consciousness, in my heart, and then the mercy comes, then the vision come, the visions come. It's not that I have to do it. I cannot do it. I am not the doer, I am the viewer. And if I am not the viewer, then I pray that I may become the viewer. I pray that my heart will become more soft, that my mind will become more quiet and more perceptive, more able to receive, 
that I can develop my feminine qualities of humility, of perception, of intuition, and not try to control or try to be bossy, try to be the super, super, super student. No, I'm not. I'm just a beginner and I need the mercy so that I can pray with a longing heart and then I can be ready for love to appear in my heart. Hmm. But you can be eager. Right? Yeah, that I. all these feelings will only come when I have a hmm? eager feeling, right? Yes. Eagerness yes. is, the, the, is, is our part. What I understood in the previous verses. Yeah, but what if I have no eagerness? You have to create. Or I go to them who have, you have eagerness. To become, yes, very good idea. No, I go crying, begging and stealing and borrowing from my brothers and sisters who have the feelings, if I have no feelings. That is also sometimes, you know, very necessary. When the pastimes manifest themselves spontaneously, he relishes them, and when they vanish, he prays. So like you also said, Guranga Sundara, it is a life of constant prayer. Wherever I am, if I am going outside or inside, that is also not always easy to say, because life is changing. But when some good times are coming, then I am so happy to receive and I'm flowing in the mercy. And when some dry times come, then I'm praying and I'm going to those who feel, who I feel they can help, help me with their juice a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so here it's also Baba says, Raguna Das is not able to decide the course of their succession. He cannot manipulate or you know say oh now i want to meditate on this on that on that it comes mm. swamini and rindavan come in their own sweet will in the heart of any devotee and it's a mercy yes. it's a blessing it is yeah? yes by the blessing of durvasa muni oh that now comes the <laughs> Nice Leela, how Shimati Radhika is a cook. Shri Radhika has become Amrita Pani, the nectar hand. <laughs> she whose hand turns everything she cooks into nectar. And increasing the lifespan of everyone who eats it. See? Because everything what is made of love increases even our material body. That's true. If we read in the Ayurveda, and we can understand this, because I know this, because I work in a company who is uh, producing prashadam, so of this <laughs> understanding, we can uh, see that food, what is even in the material world, made with a loving feeling, increases our lifespan. The material body uh will uh, uh withdraw the sickness and other things by getting this uh uh prashada and this is also we can what do you read amrita amrita, amrita pani, pani. <laughs> shemati radhika's hand is amrita pani. so we do this and we try to do it here in the radhika's kitchen to bring some good feeling in the food in the prashada we we produce and by this we understand this uh, uh, makes a uh, expand the, the lifespan of the people not not only but also this in the material way and maybe gives a new life sure <laughs> so by the blessing of Dua Samuni, that great rishi Shri Mati Radhika has become Amrita Pani, she whose hand turns everything she cooks into nectar, increasing the lifespan of everyone who eats it, destroying the diseases, nourishing the bodies, and giving them the taste of nectar. 
For this reason, Mother Yashoda, who is always overwhelmed by feeling of love for her son, daily asks her to come to her home to cook for Krishna by the agency of Kundalata. Kundalata is coming. She's a messenger. She's living at Mother Yashoda's house. Comes to ask Shrimati Radhika, please come and cook at Nandagaon. And daily they are walking. Of course, Shrimati Radharani, being Swayam Bhagavati, the supreme original goddess, that does not need boons from anyone. She doesn't really need blessings because she is the supreme goddess herself. But Garga Muni and Dovasa Muni are only unconsciously assisting in increasing the spiritual erotic flavor for Krishna. So interesting also that the rishis who have blessed Srimati Radhika, they have also, you know, they are in the service. They are in the service of Braja Bhumi. They are also serving uh, Krishna by blessing Srimati Radhika with this Amrita Pani that Mother Yashoda will ask Jatila, can you please, she has these blessings and my son, I want him to be, you know, very healthy and it is very necessary. So the blessings of them are also their service in increasing the spiritual erotic flavor for Krishna. And yes, who was asking? There are Ikadashi uh, sweets in Govinda's company. <laughs> Somebody was asking. I just read it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Kundalata obtains permission from Mother Jatila to bring Radhika to Nandishvara or Nandagaon. Although Jatila mistrusts the naughty son of Nanda, Krishna. Jatila never really knows, you know, is this going to be okay? <laughs> I think they are in love. Or maybe not. But the nice gifts of Mother Yashoda and the cows I get every year. I mean, all this money is really good for our family. <laughs> so she's like that, but also playing, you know, a role to increase the flavor of Paraki above, doing her seva as Jatila. All the gopis walk along with Kundalata like a marketplace of moons. Many, many little moons, shiny dots in the dusty roads of Vrindavan, eliminating all the forest paths with their sweet aura or splendor. All the gopis cover their heads with their veils when they pass through the village of Yavat. But when they leave the boundaries of the village, they open their veils again. How sweetly Tulasi addresses Radharani here. Swamini. And there is not a whiff of bodily consciousness in this address. You are going to cook for your prananat. That's why you are overwhelmed by ecstasy and you may sometimes trip and stumble. I will see it and I will understand it. The veil of your mind will be opened for me and nothing will remain hidden. This must be understood through the mind of the Acharya. Means the Acharya is one who's teaching by example. So means Raghunadas Goswami is the Acharya for Prem Prayojan. 
he is giving the example how to go and to nourish in our relationships to Srimati Radhika. And then, why he says this may be understood, why Tulasi speaks like that? One may ask, you know, because in our normal Vaidhi Bhakti understanding, who would say this, that I will help you, I will understand you, I will know how you feel, Swamini, when you are stumbling there, because you are so full of emotions. You cannot wait, actually, but you have to pretend that you are fully you know, in your own strength. You have to pretend. But that's why you sometimes stumble and sometimes you triple. And I am there, Swamini. I'm ready to hold you because I can feel you. I am your sweet Darcy. I'm ready to always support this. <laughs> Just see once how the sincere devotees are fixed in remembering these transcendental pastimes. And that is Raghunath Das Goswami. Ananda Das Babaji is saying, just see once how Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is fixed <laughs> in remembering these transcendental pastimes. Because then this eagerness, if we see once, becomes natural. Now we have to create some eagerness in ourselves. We have to understand something and create eagerness because we understand that this is necessary that this is our goal, and so on and so on. But understanding is a different to natural eagerness. Natural feelings, yeah. No, eagerness, especially eagerness. This um, natural eagerness, in that moment we get a small view, like Raghunath does. We become mad. Then we cannot understand this in the material body, we only have uh, experience in material senses. But if we once get a glimpse from this, like Raghunath or Rupa, Narottam Das, when they got this experience and they become mad, why Raghunath sit in the sun and not feel the sun on the shore of, of Radhakund? Because he's mad. He is in this siddha there, and there is no meaning, no more meaning of the uh, of the material body. Now, and this this is the difference. In that moment we get a glimpse, there is then in that moment we can become mad, and the, the eagerness to, to see the more of this uh, becomes natural. Mm. Mm -hmm. no? It is natural if you if you get a a, a meal, uh, for example, in this world, you never eat before. You maybe you go in some some restaurant and they present you a unbelievable meal. Your your tongue never tastes this, and you will never forget it, and you become eager to, to get it a, a second time. Mm. And this is only a small example, what is meaning of a glimpse of the, in the spiritual uh, abode. You will not live without this. You want again and again see this. And this is a natural eagerness. But now we have not experienced and we have to create a little eagerness to get it. To higher eagerness. Yes. Natural eagerness. <laughs> so back to Raghunath Das Goswami and the, the Acharyas. They are horripilating, you know. They have these goosebumps. They have this of ecstasy when they remember the sweetness 
of Swaminis each and every limb and mm -hmm. gesture, mm -hmm. how she walks, how she's moving, how her body, how her legs are shaking sometimes, mm -hmm. and they feel it. Swaminis happiness will awaken in the heart of the Kinkari. Kinkari knows when her Swamini is happy. <laughs> we also want to become qualified to experience this in the heart. You can go back, Suniti, this, hmm? this Kinkari, what was it? They remember the sweetness of Swaminis each and every limb and gesture. And Swaminis happiness will awaken in the heart of the Kinkari. The Kinkari knows when her Swamini is happy. So this is the meaning of this oneness. No? When we are identified <coughs> as a Manjari, we 100% know feel what she feels no? and know what she feels. This is uh, the beauty of the of the Mandarins, no? what here is described, we can... Yes. No? Knows when her Swamini is happy. And this knowing, we can also get even in the Sadak Deya, no? because of our daily behave, we know what makes her happy. So, and we can do in the material life what makes Swamini happy. What makes love happy is love. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And see also her Krishna everywhere and serve her in this way that we make him here happy. <laughs> Well, I first of all always have the desire to make all devotees happy. I am honest. Because you devotees are my expansions of Gurudev and of Swamini. So that's how I feel. And I hope you have some little good feelings by our sharing today. And I try to watch, but I, I didn't see that Gurudev is here. He is there. Where's Gurudev? It's there. He is hiding. This is the meaning. We don't have a glimpse of him. So, but we can uh, imagine him somehow. There you are. Yeah. Okay, good. We found you. <laughs> yeah. I got a nice cap. I'm not the goal. is the goal. But we need the mercy. Always we need the mercy. Who we'll make nice cap for you, Jainanda? Yeah, this is a mercy. <laughs> this is mercy. Who made? I don't know. Some great devotee made. This is so, <laughs> you know, so wonderfully made. <laughs> yes, it's very nice. And yes. this is the color. The color is uh, when is remembering Swamini on Krishna. Yes. So that that. You can, we can see that you know how to make her happy. <laughs> this Guru is the Dev meaning. Knows. Guru Dev if, knows. And then Guru Dev give mercy, we may know. You see? Guru you Manjari, see, this Guru is... Manjari, Guru Manjari show us how to, you know, how to <laughs> yeah. please Swamini. This is the example in everyday life, how to make her happy. No? Yes. This is... What here is described, the Kinkaris knows when her Swamini is happy. <laughs> yeah, and also, you know, Suniti said also, if Radha, Radha Dasi happy, Swami is also very happy. We pleased our, yeah. our yeah. Dasi, Dasi's friend. 
Sabu, that's yeah. awesome. Then she will be very happy. <laughs> I am just lucky if I'm a Dasi of the friend of that of Shrimati Radhika. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. I think we have a natural end now, isn't it?